Starting section 11.4 means that we are now focusing on volume. So we've spent a lot of time on surface area and lateral area. Now we're looking at the volume of rectangular prisms, triangular prisms, cylinders, and these things we call composite figures, which are going to be a combination of different shapes that we are able to find the volume of. So first we have some vocabulary. The volume is the space that a figure occupies. And then the next thing we have is this thing called Cavalieri's Principle. Cavalieri's Principle. And this is something good to know. It's actually very interesting. If you have two or three or four space figures or objects that have the same height, so you can see these are all the same height, and the same cross-sectional area. So what that means is the area of any of these pieces or like any slice of this shape, if those areas are the same everywhere, at every level, then they have to have the same volume. It's a very interesting idea. The next thing we see is the volume of a prism Volume of a prism is the product of the area of the base and the height of the prism. So first we're going to take area of the base, which remember is capital B, and we're just going to slowly fill that up with water, which is raising the area of the base all the way up the entire height of our prism. So the formula we have is V equals BH. So let's look at some examples of how we're going to do this. All right, so this example, I see that I have a rectangular prism. So what I need to do is I need to identify what my base is, and I need to find the area of that base. First, though, let's remember, we're looking for volume. Volume equals the area of the base times my height. Okay, so the area of my base, well, this is my base right here. It's a rectangle, and the dimensions are 24 centimeters by 20 centimeters. So all I have to do to find my area of my base is multiply 24 times 20. So 24 times 20 is going to give me 480 centimeters squared. I have to multiply that by my height. My height is 10 centimeters. It's the distance from my base to my other base. Remember you have two bases within these prisms. There are the congruent, parallel sides here, this rectangle, this rectangle. Okay, so I've got the area of my base, here's my height. Now I'm just gonna multiply that 480 by 10, which gives me volume equals 4,800 centimeters cubed. Now that's important. Volume is always going to be in cubic, cubic units. So cubic centimeters, meters cubed, feet cubed, whatever. But I'm always going to have a cubic unit there because I'm taking the area, which is already a squared unit, and I'm multiplying it again by my height. So that's the first problem for you. Go ahead and do your U try there. Now we're gonna look at another example where we have a triangular prism. Now we focused a lot on this in class, but remember that in this prism here, this is not my base this rectangle right here. Even though it's lying on that side, that's not the base. It's the two congruent parallel figures. So this triangle here and this triangle here. Those are my two bases. So let's write our formula for volume. To find the area of my base, since I'm dealing with a triangle, I have one half my base of my triangle times my height of my triangle. Now I know that the base of my triangle is eight inches because it's an equilateral, all of my sides are eight. So one half, eight. But my height, I have to determine. So let's think for just a minute. Let's say this is my altitude coming down. That cuts this into a four. I know this is an eight. So I'm looking for my height right there. I can use Pythagorean Theorem, and sorry that's kind of sideways. If you turn your head a little bit, you can see a little bit better. So I've got 4 squared plus x squared equals 8 squared. 
16 plus x squared equals 64. 64 minus 16 gives me 48. If I take the square root of that, I get x equals 6.9282. Remember, you should never round within a problem. Always round at the very end, but carry all those decimals through. So that's your height, 6.9282. Okay, so let's multiply that by 8. 6.9282 times 8 times 0.5. Okay, when I multiply that, I get the area of my base is equal to 27.7128 inches squared. That's the area of just the base of this triangular prism. So just one of these bases. Now I need to insert that into my formula here. So I get V equals 27.7128 inches squared. And I'm multiplying that by my height. Now remember, it kind of gets confusing when you're talking about the height of your base, the height of your prism. This height is the height of my prism, which is defined as the distance between my two bases. So that's this distance right here, which is 10 inches. So I need to multiply that value by 10, which gives me a volume of 277. You can go ahead and round to the nearest tenth here. 0.1 inches cubed. So that's your volume for that problem. We had to do a little bit more here because we had to find the area of this triangular base, which means we have to use one half base times height. Our base we knew was eight, but our height we had to calculate by doing Pythagorean theorem. So it was a little bit more in depth. You go ahead and you do the you try here. Now the next thing we're looking at is the volume of a cylinder. And what you need to know is it's the same idea. I'm using the same formula, V equals BH. But now when I look at B, because I have a cylinder, B is the area of a circle, okay? So let's go ahead and fill in this blank here. We've got the volume of a cylinder is the product of the area of the base and the height of the cylinder. So look, it's that same formula. But in this case, because it's a circle, we know volume equals pi r squared h, okay? All right, so any cylinder, pi r squared h. It's the same formula we've been using. Let's look at an example. Volume equals pi r squared h. So let's start plugging in. My volume equals pi my radius is 3, and my height is 8. So 3 squared is 9, and 9 times 8 gives me 72. So my volume is 72 pi, and I'm done. I leave it just like that in terms of pi. Then you go ahead and do that you try there. The very last thing we have to look at are composite space figures, which is when you have this 3D object that's a combination of two other figures, maybe more than two figures, that we can put together. We can find each of the volumes separately and then combine the volumes to find the volume of the whole thing. So this first example is a fish tank. Now the fish tank is not just a typical rectangular fish tank. It's something you would maybe see like at the, at the dentist's office or something. We've got this rectangular base but then we've also got this semicircle here added on to the very end of it. So we have to look and see what's going to happen when we actually have to add these volumes together. All right, so first thing we have to understand, the volume of this whole thing is going to equal the volume of the rectangle plus the volume of the semicircle. Now, that's not like technical notation that you're going to see in a book or anything, but that's just going to help us remember that we need to combine these two different volumes. Okay, so in order to start looking for these volumes, what we need to do is we need to get some measurements because they gave us some really helpful measurements in the picture itself, but we also have some more that we need to find. 
So if I draw into this, I can see that this line right here is going to complete the other side of that rectangle. So I know that that's 24 inches. But what that tells me is that the radius, or I'm sorry, the diameter of my circle is 24 inches. And this piece right here has to be a radius. So that's got to be 12 inches. So now I found some missing dimensions that are really helpful to me. The other thing I know is if this whole thing here is 48 inches, but we said that this little piece of our semicircle here is 12 inches, I know the remaining side of my rectangle is 36 inches. So I basically have this rectangle. I'm going to kind of sketch it out. which is 24 by 24 by 36. And I also have this sort of, sorry, that's harder for me to sketch out. I've got this semicircle, which has a diameter of 24, has a radius of 12, and it has a height of 24 as well, because the whole fish tank is 24 inches tall. So I've got my two different shapes. So let's find the volume of each of them separately. For the first one, I'm going to do the area of my base, which is 36 times 24. That's the area of my base. That gets me 864, remember my units are inches, so inches squared, is the area of my base. But for volume, I have to take base times height. So I need to take that 864 and multiply it by my height of 24. When I do that, I get a total volume of 20,736 inches cubed. So that's my first volume. That's what I'm going to end up putting into this spot in just a minute here. Now my other volume, it's like half of a cylinder. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pretend this is a whole cylinder, and then I'm just going to cut it in half at the end. So if it were a whole cylinder, I would have pi r squared h. So pi, my radius we said is 12. My height, well, the whole fish tank is 24 inches tall. So, oops, I forgot my little squared there. I need to take 144 times 24. What I've got here is volume equals 3, 4, 5, 6, 3,456 pi. But that is for the whole cylinder. I need to divide that by two, because it's only half of a cylinder. It's not the whole thing. So I'm gonna cut that in half. That gives me 1,728 pi. Now because I actually want like a very accurate answer, I'm going to actually put in pi and figure out what that's going to be instead of leaving it in terms of pi. Okay, so that gives me 1,728 pi is the same as 5,428.6721. Okay, so I've got both of my volumes. I've got the volume of my rectangle. I've got the volume of my um, half of my cylinder. So I'm going to add those two things together. And I end up with a total volume of 26,165. The reason I end up with 65 is because it says to the nearest cubic inch, inches cubed. So I rounded it to the nearest whole number. I had, had 26,164.67, but I rounded it up to 26,165 inches cubed. So I had to break it apart into two objects that I knew I could deal with. You're looking at this next U-try, which is a very similar problem. Go ahead, do that, bring it to class, and I will see you then.